As a bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so our God rejoices over us. O God, we drink from the river of delight, for with you is the fountain of delight. Mighty God, you call us all from near and from far, from unanticipated corners of this wide world, to bear witness to the dawning revelation of divine love in Jesus Christ. May we see this love as we worship you this morning. Hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing, sing hymn number 338. God, we have gone our own way, 
not loving you as we ought, nor loving our neighbors as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Father, forgive us. Help us to love you and our neighbors, and to live for your honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you return to him. Please turn to page 12 of your hymn book for the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. we go to God in a time of prayer, please notice the prayer concern list in your bulletin. Keep those people in your thoughts and prayers this week. Uh, are there others that we should be praying for today as we go to God in prayer? <coughs> Any other situations or besides that COVID calm down? <laughs> Let's go then to God in prayer. God, we thank you for your ever-present presence. No matter where we are, there you are, always blessing us, always providing for our needs, and always giving us what we need most. We thank you for your grace and your comfort, your forgiveness, your support, your knowledge, your wisdom, all those things that we have to have come from beyond us sometimes, you bring us, and we thank you for that. And thank you for the many blessings we enjoy each and every day in our homes, at our work, uh, in our coming and in our going. We lift up those on the prayer list and any others we might have in our hearts that we're concerned about. We know you are a God of healing. We know that you are a God who cares. And because you care and because you can heal, that's why we lift these people up. Knowing in faith that you will work, that you will work in their lives and restore them to health, support them and comfort them along the way and be with them. Thank you for the opportunity to be disciples of Jesus Christ. That's not an easy thing to do if we take it seriously. If we really listen to the words that Jesus said and the commands that he gave and the invitations that he offered, it can be so very difficult, especially today, to follow him, to do what he would have us do, 
to be who he would have us be and to reach out to those he would have us reach out to. So give us grace to follow. Give us strength and courage to follow Jesus. And we thank you again for being, having the opportunity to be disciples. As disciples, we meet to worship and we lift all this up in Jesus' name. Amen. If the ushers would come at this time, we'll receive the morning offering. pray. Receive these our gifts, O God, and not those alone, but the gift of ourselves, and use all that to get your work done, to accomplish your will, and to help others. In Christ's name we make our offering. Amen. I appreciate being invited back. Uh, it's good to be here today uh, and good to be with you. When I came in, they told me the choir wouldn't be singing, and I would have sang, but I didn't want to empty the room. <laughs> um, that's enough said about that. Today's scripture is a, from both Isaiah and the Revelation. Uh, we're going to think this morning a bit together about renewal in being made new. Isaiah 43, 16 through 19 reads this way, Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, 
a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down and cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. So do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And then John's vision is recorded in the Revelation. Chapter 21, verses 1 through 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among men and women. He will dwell with them and they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and death will be no more and mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. We've heard that word a lot in the last few days. New. It's a new year. You know, when it comes to a new year, some people can't wait for one year to get over and the other one to start if they've had a difficult year. Some people hope things will just get even better if they've had a good year. And some hope everything will just kind of stay the same. And all of us hopes 2022 brings an end to this crazy pandemic of COVID. The coming of a new year holds some kind of promise for all of us. Because God has made time new in giving us the gift of a new year. A clean slate, a new start, a blank page. But is the gift of a new year enough to bring us what we need most? Maybe it's us that need to be made new in a new year. Is it possible that we could live our lives in a whole new way? New. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? And we like new things, don't we? Just think about the last brand new thing you bought, received as a gift or traded for. We love new things. They can be exciting and inviting. Like a new car. I didn't mean to be cruel when this happened. And it knocked me out of running for father of the year. But I went car shopping one time in Greensboro when we lived there on my daughter, my youngest daughter's birthday. I didn't think that much about it. And I was just going to go look at cars. You know how it is. I'm just going to go look at them and sit in a few of them. And I was looking for a used car, but I sat because the salesman was smart in a brand new car. And I smelt that smell. You know the smell I'm talking about, that new car smell. And it was over. Bought the car, came home. My daughter comes running out the door and just is so excited and goes, Daddy, Daddy. And I had to say, Honey, this isn't for you. (laughs) This is my car. Like I said, I didn't mean to be cruel. It's just that new car smell got to me. And if we can't have new things, we seek out that other category, good is new. If you Google good is new or just like new, You see a whole host of products and offers on the internet from refurbished electronics to wrinkle cream to car finish to used cars to auction items as good as new is the promise. Many of us wish perhaps today our bodies could be good as new. Wouldn't that be nice? Or at least restored to some point in time. The word we use to describe this process is renewal. 
That's the process by which something is made new or something is made good as new. Well, I believe that what you and I need most in a new year is to be made new again in some area of our lives. We need renewal. Why? Well, sometimes our faith gets beat up and gets weak. Sometimes we just get weary from all the things we've had to face. Sometimes we need to be washed clean by the grace of forgiveness. Sometimes our joy has leaked out of our lives like air out of a balloon. Sometimes we get broken by grief and loss and we need to be put back together in a new way. Sometimes we just get tired of our own voice and weary of behavior that we tried and tried to change but can't. Maybe a relationship has got into a mess and we long for it to be new again. We just need something new to happen sometimes. We need to be made good as new, don't we? And how do we need renewal as a church in the new year? That's a question a church must always ask itself. What new thing do we need to do this year? What new thing does God need to do in us? Is it a new mission and outreach? Do we need to be reaching out more to people and include them in our fellowship? Do we need a new vision for the future? As we face a new year as individuals and as a church, we need to be made new or at least as good as new. Well, I'm here today to tell you that our God is in the renewal business. God promises to do this in us and for us. And in fact, everything can be made new again because that's who God is and that's what God does. The book of the Revelation, John records a vision he had while he was in the exile on the island of Patmos. The part I appreciate most and need to hear often is when he sees this. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. And then John hears a voice from the throne saying things are going to be new. There's not going to be any more death or crying or pain for the former things have passed away. And verse 5 is what I really need to hear some days. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Now many are quick to point out perhaps that this is talking about heaven. And that's true. And that's what's going to be so awesome about heaven. Everything will be new unspoiled, pristine, unblemished, perfect as it should be. Bodies and minds and spirits will be made new. But I believe the good news for today is that God doesn't wait till we get to heaven to try to make us new. God makes all things new here and now in your life and my life. New attitudes. New commitments, new behaviors, new actions. And in Isaiah 43, we hear these words of hope and intention. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. It springs up now. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now these words were spoken while Israel was in captivity in Babylon. And Isaiah was trying to say, get ready, the new is coming. The time of exile will be over. God is ready to set the captives free and lead them back home. Behold, says God, I make all things new. And that's the promise of God that rings down through eternity. Behold, I make all things new. And then he said, write this down because this is trustworthy and true. Well, is it? Can God really make all things new? Yes. 
Yes, God can. God makes all things new or as good as new by the power of His grace and out of His awesome love for His children. But how does that work? We can count on God to do God's part. God is ready and willing to make things new in us. We can see this in the many ways God worked through Jesus in all the healings and restorations in the New Testament. When the leper was healed, his, leg, his uh, skin was good as new. When the lame man was able to walk, his leg was good as new. The blind man's eyes were as good as new at the touch of Jesus. But you and I have a part to play in this being made new or as good as new. We need to be partners with God and work with God or it won't work like God wants it to. And we realize, need to realize that as exciting and inviting as new things can be, they can be challenging for us to accept. And that's because they involve something that many of us don't like. And that's change. <laughs> that's change. Indeed, new things can mean changes in our life. And you know, we have to get used to new things anyway. Like brand new clothes or brand new shoes. In the Bible, as awful as it was in Egypt, if you remember, the people of Israel kept saying, why didn't, why didn't Moses just leave us in Egypt? Why did he bring us out here in the wilderness? They preferred the old and familiar to this new thing that was happening to them. I dread getting a new cell phone, don't you? That's why I keep the ones I have for just as long as I possibly can. The screen will get cracked, the cover will get worn out, but I don't want to go through all that mess of learning something new. Um, I'm still trying to understand my own one and don't fully understand it. And I have a laptop at home that's pitiful. I mean, if you saw it, you'd want to take up an offering for me to get a new one. <laughs> it looks like it's been dropped down the stairs because the screen is separated a little bit from the keyboard. The keyboard doesn't work, so I've got a, a manual keyboard that I plug in. It was dropped by one of my granddaughters, God bless her. And I can get a new one, but I don't want to because it's a new one. And that means setting it up all over again, transferring the data, getting used to new programs. And see, sometimes we prefer the old and familiar to the new because it involves change. And it can happen at a church level too. In fact, some might argue church, churches have an even more pronounced resistance to the new sometimes. How many Methodists does it take to change a light bulb? Answer, why do we need to change the light bulb? <laughs> we don't like to change things. And someone has said that the seven deadliest words spoken in church are these, we have always done it this way. But despite our resistance as individuals in churches, we need renewal to be made new in some areas of our lives or some area of our life together. We need God to do a new thing in us and in our midst. We face a new year, as I said earlier. It stretches out before us like an empty canvas, a clean slate, a new start, an unblemished piece of paper, uncharted waters. So how are we going to move through this new year that's laid out before us and been given to us as a gift from God? Are we going to move through it in the same old ways, the same habits, the same attitudes, points of view, and knowledge base? Will we only see the world around us in the same way? Or will God show us something new? Will we resist the renewal process God is trying to make happen in us? 
Or will we seek and welcome the renewal that only God can bring us in a new year? Now, we may have to learn to do things in a different way. We may have to learn to see things in a different way. We will have to learn to be open and willing to whatever God wants to do in us. We may have to make some changes in the ways we've always done things as individuals or as a church. But the God who makes all things new will renew us from the inside out. God will renew our minds and our hearts. Romans 12 reminds us, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've probably gotten these, but I got a renewal notice in the mail the other day about my car registration. Well, when you get a renewal notice in the mail, you know you need to do something. You need to act. You need to take some kind of action and take care of it. Could God be giving each of us a renewal notice today? What kind of renewal do you need today? What kind of renewal does this church need? As we know it all too well, it takes way more than New Year's resolutions to a real change in us. A couple weeks ago, we had the opportunity to make them. How many of you have made resolutions or did or even bothered? I was going to ask how many had already broken, but you don't have to raise your hand on that. Supposedly, research has been done on this. And before the first month of the year comes to an end, most resolutions are broken. Research conducted by Strava, which is the social network for athletes, has discovered, and I don't know how they did that, that January 12th is a fateful day for New Year's resolutions. So that's coming up next week. It takes more than New Year's resolutions. It takes being made new and renewed by God. As fractured human beings, it takes the power from beyond us to help us if we're really going to change our behaviors and habits and even our attitudes. Because what we really need is changes of mind and heart. They are the changes that make a difference. Being made new on the inside is the key to lasting change. And this being made new affects our behavior, our habits, our attitudes, and even our bodies. When God makes our hearts new or our minds new, the real lasting change we need in some area of our lives can happen. And that's the good news. God is a God who makes all things new. Just think about all the people in the Bible uh, that were made new by God. The woman caught in adultery that was brought to Jesus. From the words of Jesus, her life was made new. What about David after the Bathsheba incident? What about Paul on the road to Damascus? What about Peter on the beach after the resurrection? Peter had denied Jesus three times, but Jesus appointed him as a new leader of the church. He made him new. The blind, the lame, the lepers, the demon-possessed, even the disciples were made new. Hearts were made new. Minds were made new. Relationships were made new. Renewal happened. My guess is that one of the areas that all of us, including me, may need the most renewal today is in our commitment to following Jesus and supporting this church. Is your commitment to Jesus as strong as it ever was, or has it gotten weak over the past year? Is your your faith getting a bit weary since all that's happened since March of 2020? Is there something about your support and involvement in this church that needs renewal? God can make our commitment to Jesus and this church new again, 
or at least as good as new if we'll just ask God and then work with God as he makes us new. That's the good news. And this good news can propel us into a new year ready to do the great things that God has in mind for for us in this church. So may we be open as we stand on the verge of a new year to be made new. May we be open to all the ways that God might want to do that. And may God make things new in us and make us as good as new as we begin 2022. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, forgive our resistance to change. Remove anything in us that stands in the way of you making us new or as good as new in that area of our lives that we need it most, in that area of our church that we need it most. Help us to trust you. Help us to trust what John said, that these words are trustworthy and true. Behold, I make all things new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The closing hymn is number 302, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. 302, let's stand and sing together. theme for a brand new year as we move through it. May God bless you and keep you. Go now in peace. Amen. Let's sing the response. <laughs>